This is the Caribdes. It is a 3D printed, split, ergonomic, mechanical keyboard with a trackball. When I designed it, I had to do a lot of things from scratch, including designing the 3D model, getting help for the firmware, but also designing the sensor PCB. The sensor PCB looks like this, and it is one of the most important parts of the keyboard because it is this sensor PCB that reads the position of the trackball and then transfers it to the Elite C or El Elite Pi or whatever board you are using. When I started working on this project, I decided to use the PMW3360 sensor because it was proven to be reliable and used in multiple mouses. And I also saw that there was existing trackball keyboards that were using the same sensor. However, you cannot just connect the sensor directly. You need some components around it to help, well, to enable it to work. So the first thing I did was to start looking online for existing designs that I could maybe reuse, work from, buy, like the ones from KB Junkie and Arya Mellon on GitHub. But when looking online, I quickly started to find issues with those sensor PCBs. One of them was that some some of them were closed source and available only through some specific online shops. And I wanted to work with on open source hardware. And I also did not want to rely on one or two online shops for this such an important part of my keyboards. The second issue is that when looking at open source sensor PCBs, a lot of them had pretty outdated hardware and the components were either hard to find or n not findable at all and I had to re I would have to replace some of the components so because of this and because I wanted to tailor the size of the sensor PCB exactly so that it would fit in my keyboard I slowly started to de to design my own sensor PCB around that same time Blamas on the French mechanical Discord server was also working on a sensor PCB. And he sent me a few of them. And at the same time, I also ordered a few PCBs online, as well as the required components, and soldered them, and they were working. So I was on the right track. So after receiving the PCBs, I started hand soldering some components on them to test if it works out. And it did. However, things were very complicated. Back then I was not that good at soldering and two specific components were giving me a very hard time. The level shifter and the voltage regulator. Now, I will not discuss in detail how a voltage regulator and a level shifter work because this is a bit out of scope of this video. But what you need to know is that they are very important parts of the sensor PCB. Without them, the sensor just cannot work. The level shifter is a component that makes the translation between the Elite C or Splink key or whatever board you are using and the PMW3360 sensor because those two are using very different voltages and the level shifter is there to ensure that those two can talk together. The level shifter that Blamas was using was very very small and had very small legs. And because of that, it was very difficult to solder. I managed to solder a few of them using a hot air gun and some solder paste. However, it was not very reliable and I was messing up a lot of them. Back then, my goal was to provide easy do-it-yourself kits for people who don't necessarily have a lot of experience with soldering. So I wanted to make sure the kit was easy to assemble. And because of that, I wanted to provide the sensor PCBs assembled. And if I was having trouble assembling them, then someone who doesn't have a lot of experience soldering would for sure have difficulties. Now, back then, I didn't have any experience with PCB assembly, which is ordering the, sens the sensor PCB directly assembled from a factory. And because I didn't have experience, I wanted to uh, 
keep soldering things myself. So what I did is I found another level shifter that was much, much bigger. And after receiving the new prototypes, it turned out that it was indeed way easier to assemble and solder in. So to select another level shifter that will be appropriate, I worked from the technical documentation, which if you are not used to reading technical documentation can be a little bit overwhelming. However, with the help of a few friends and some people on Discord, I managed to find a replacement level shifter that worked perfectly. So with those new components that were easy to hand solder, I started making multiple sensor PCBs just to install them in keyboards, check if they work, send them to testers. And it was back then that I realized that they had one big issue, which is they were screaming. By screaming, I mean that I heard a very high-pitched noise, which is referred to as coil whine. Now, if you look up the definition of coil whine, you get this, which is coil whine is an audible sound produced by materials vibrating because of electromagnetic forces. What does this mean? This means that on the circuit, there was a component that was vibrating and generating a sound. That was not good. I don't wanna, I didn't want to ship keyboards that people would use and that will make noise. This is also a phenomenon that's present on some graphic cards and it's very audible. Now, the issue was, where does this noise come from? Back then, I didn't really have the required tools to debug, to debug it. You need specifically an oscilloscope. So I sent the PCB to a friend of mine who had an oscilloscope, and this is what he saw. The interesting part about this picture is the blue line. What should have been a consistent, stable two volts was instead going back and forth between two volts and zero volts, and then two volts, and zero volts again, over and over again. This voltage was going back and forth between two volts and zero volts at a very specific frequency, a frequency of 12 kilohertz, which is hearable by the human ear. So there was a component on this circuit that was vibrating at 12 kilohertz and generating noise. Now, where do we go from here? The recommended power supply for a PMW3360 sensor is between 1.8 and 2.1 volts. This is a problem because the voltage that a 32U4 MCU runs at is typically 5 volts, whereas an RP2040 chip, which is now what I use, runs at 3.3 volts. So you need a component to, trans to convert this 5 or 3.3 volts all the way down to two volts. And that is called a voltage regulator. When I was looking at different components, I found the XC6 something. And I selected it because it was in a format that was easy to hand solder, it was cheap, and it was available from multiple sources. So that seemed like a very good choice. When looking at the different sensors, I was looking at two things specifically. Can it provide the appropriate voltage, 2 volts, and can it provide enough current for the sensor to work? The PMW3360 sensor requires around 70 milliamps to work. This is, according to their technical documentation, a normal case current consumption. The voltage regulator I selected, on the other hand, could provide 500 milliamperes. So 500, 70, we had a lot of margin. Or did we? Now, turns out there was a very small note at the bottom of the documentation that said that the current that the voltage regulator provides will can only go up to a formula, which is PD divided by V in minus V out. Now we can calculate this. If you read the documentation, according to the format of the 
a component I selected, PD equals 500 milliwatts. Voltage that comes in is 5 volts at the time from I was using Elite C's, and voltage that, voltage that goes out is 2 volts because that's what we want for the sensor. Now we calculate everything and it goes down to 83 milliampers. This means that we have a sensor that typically uses 70 milliampers, and on the other side, a voltage regulator that can provide up to 83 milliampers. And at this point, you might think, so we still have some margin, right? So it should work. Except this is only the theory. This is nominal numbers that you can get from reading the docs. In real life, the current consumption of the sensor fluctuates and can go higher than 83 milliamps. When the consumption went higher than 83 milliamps, the voltage regulator couldn't follow and then just stopped working, which is instead of providing 2 volts, it was going all the way down to 0 volts. So that's what happened. But why did it happen at such a specific 12 kilohertz frequency. The PMW3360 sensor is essentially a small camera that takes pictures from the trackball and then compares them to calculate how fast the trackball is going. Now, it takes those pictures at a very specific frequency, which is 12,000 pictures per second. That's the same 12,000 as the 12,000 hertz that we're hearing. So what happened is that every time the sensor turned on to take a picture, it drew too much current, which made the voltage regulator crash and go back to zero. And then after the picture, go back up to two volts. And this happened 12,000 times per second. So it generated a noise of 12,000 Hertz. With this issue figured out, the fix was actually pretty simple. I just looked for another voltage regulator which could provide more current and this time I was much more careful about checking the footnotes. With all this fixed, I had a functioning design that was cheap to order, used off-the-shelf components that I had a lot of stock on and it was easy to solder. So when I started selling Caribdis keyboards, I was hand soldering all those sensor PCBs. It turns out that that takes quite a lot of time. And even though it was easier to solder, I still had some issues with another voltage regulator because it had pads that were so close together. Now, because of that, I eventually decided to switch to PCB assembly. When doing PCB assembly, you directly order the PCB from the factory with all the components placed on the board and soldered in, so you don't have to do that work yourself. But this is a whole other topic, so I will be covering it in another video. This sensor PCB design has turned out to become pretty popular and has been reused in other keyboards for integrating a trackball in them without having to redesign everything from scratch. If you want to take a look at it yourself, all the files are on GitHub of which I will provide a link in the description below. Or if you want help with designing your own keyboard, feel free to drop by the Discord server where for sure you'll, you can find some really nice people to help you. So that's it for this video. This was the first video we make about a more technical subject. I hope you liked it. And if you would like to see more technical videos, please let me know. And if you have specific ideas, I would love to take a look at them. Thanks for watching.